All right. So if we're ready to go, so is there a creator? This is your, yeah. should be a Yusuf with an atheist. I don't know if he's actually agnostic or not. I, I think I've heard of this guy, but I may have met him. I might have. I can't remember. Um, so it's only 13 minutes, so we'll see where we get. Again, if you guys hear something that Shabir says that's nonsense, which will probably be very lightly and very quick, then just shout out and I'll stop it. Otherwise, I'll stop it when I hear something. So here we go. Able to locate him in the natural world. Right. Whoa, that's a little bit fast, even for me. Let's slow that down to 1.25. My, my view is... But at the same time, I'm thinking, wait a minute, if I have nothing in the natural world to establish the existence of a creator, how then do I know there is a creator? Okay, so that's an interesting question. If you have nothing, he's presupposing there's nothing in the world to establish a creator. Well, in Islam, presumably the Quran is one way to establish that. Miracles are another. Prophecies are another. So presumably, um, if he thinks that Allah is in some way... Um, at least interfered with or communicated with or had some interaction with the natural world, then in principle there is a way that we can establish whether there's a creator, especially if um, there we, 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 there's no evidence where we would expect it. So if there's claims made that the Quran is from God or that Muhammad spoke to you know, an angel in the cave or whatever the case may be, and we see no good reasons to believe that. In fact, we see bad reasons for believing that. In fact, it's more likely that humans made this up than that would be evidence against the God. Now, my logic was leading me to a certain destination. That being, okay, now I have confidently convinced myself that a creator, if there is one, is certainly not to be found in the natural world. Agree. Well, if he is not to be found in the natural world, how then am I going to establish the existence of a creator? Why? Second step Rob, game. Sorry. I don't understand. Why, why would he have convinced himself that if there is a creator, it can't be part of the natural world? Why? I don't understand that. Why is he making this claim? I mean, if, if, a, if a creator is creating in the natural world, then it should be part of the natural world. You, you can't be creating in the natural world something if you are outside the, um, the natural world. How is that supposed to work? Uh, he's obviously taking the Islamic narrative already, which is Allah's not part of his creation, and so that's presumably what he means, exactly. that he's not part of the natural exactly. world, right? So he's already starting with that view in mind. So he's not starting from a neutral position of, um, I'm not sure about this, or I'm undecided, let me investigate. He's definitely not doing that, and he never has very likely, right? So he's starting with his biases already in the view, and, and that's evident, as you quite rightly point out, by this particular statement. Logically speaking, if there is a creator, yes, and the definition, I use the word definition, of a creator is one who is all-powerful, one is the one who created everything. I said, well, if that is the case, then... Okay, well, there's a couple of ifs there, right? Um, a creator wouldn't necessarily need to be all-powerful, all a creator, if you just, you know, again, as somebody pointed out there, right, um, Shabir sort of argues this this view kind of a deist view although as stops has pointed out there as well if you just listen to the language you can see that it's not just a deist view but he, he, you know if you don't pick it up in the moment then it sounds very much deistic um in in that sense you know just talking about a creator but yeah. then but uh, all a creator needs to do is is have the power to create a universe that's essentially the, the one attribute that a creator must have everything else is debatable Right. Did that creator, because again, we're not talking about a specific one, right? He's just talking or, or attempting to or pretending to talk about a creator in general. So it's not a case that a creator is, is, must be all powerful. It could just be that it's created the universe. Whatever other attributes the creator has would be, you know, open to discussion and would, you would need to discover or be, it would have to be revealed in some way or other. So uh, that, that's not the case that he needs to be all powerful. So we, and, and then, we certainly wouldn't agree with that. Or, or the, the better way to put that is, okay, so what's the argument that, that it's necessary for the creator to be all-powerful? I do agree that it's necessary for a creator to create if there is one. But further than that, everything else is open for discussion, or at least you need to present an argument for it, assuming that we're taking this hypothetical that a creator has created the universe. Yeah, exactly. Good point. But the thing is, notice how he is sliding in these definitions as though they have been established, as though these are all agreed upon. He's just sliding them in there. No, they're not. Those are his personal claims. Then logic is dictating to me that in, in contrast to a creator, I would necessarily be the inferior one. Yeah, not in a negative way. 
Okay, but I would okay. be. Well, what other way is there if you if you're inferior? Is that a positive thing, not in a negative way? Well, tell me when it when you when you're inferior and it's positive. I can build a machine which is much more powerful than me. So then I am the inferior one because I. I am creating something that is stronger, but this is singular. It would be inferior because I am in the position of not knowing everything, in opposition to this being who knows everything. Ah, okay. So his his view on in being inferior is because he doesn't know everything and he's presupposing the other being knows everything. Well, that's an argument that you need to establish, right? Exactly. If we're simply granting you a creator, a creator doesn't need to know everything. A creator just needs to know how to create whatever it is he's creating. Uh, so that's again a hidden premise that he ha that we wouldn't accept uh, at this stage. He'd, ne he'd need to make an argument for him, for this creator having to be omniscient, according to the understanding. But if that is the case, then it also logically applies why I cannot find him in the natural world in the physical form. Yeah. No, it doesn't. No, in no way does it do that. That's a complete non sequitur. We'll see now whether he argues for it. His view, let me just spell it out here. His view is if he knows everything, because that's what he said, right? If this God is, then it follows that we cannot find him in the natural world. No, it doesn't. What's the argument for that? Why is it that an all-knowing being cannot be found in the natural world? The creator of the world and this all-knowing being cannot be part of it. That is, in fact, now you're, now you're limiting God, and, and I haven't heard a good argument as to why that would, you, you would impose that limitation. It seems to me to be, in a sense, self-defeating. So there's probably a, some argument out there, but he's not establishing it or he's certainly not presenting it. And if I was listening to him now, knowing what I know and having a bit more experience is that as soon as I hear something, I'm like, stop, what's the argument for that? You just made that claim. I'm grand you and creator creates for the sake of the discussion, but these other things you need to establish through some sort of argument and not just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to grant this to you just because you asserting them. Not the signs that we would consider, but in the physical form, I can't find him. Well, fine. Whoa. Now just because he can't find him doesn't mean that he can't do it. What's that all about? I mean, that he would be very quick to to challenge somebody who said, "Oh well, because I don't see him, he doesn't exist." What absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence? Somebody like that might say, but he's just said, "Oh, because you can't find him in physical form, he doesn't exist." No, 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 that doesn't follow either. Now, the next step: if there is a creator, then necessarily there must be a communication from the creator to the human being. I no, know. another non sequitur. Goodness gracious. How, we're in 1 minute 41 here. I mean, listen to how many non sequiturs, so, so many unsubstantiated claims that are made here, even if we're just granting the, you know, the initial idea of a, of a creator. That's, that definitely doesn't follow. It stops. You wanted to add something there. No, I was screaming no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be a deist creator. It doesn't follow that just because the creator has created this universe or is indeed some sort of creator that he wants to communicate with humans. That doesn't follow. You need an argument why it's not a deist God, but rather a, a personal God. And again, he's just saying that it follows. No, that's an error in thinking. We've had, I don't know, I've lost count. We'd have to go back and rewind this. At least four or five, I would suggest, up to this point. We're only one minute 41 into this. And we've granted that a creator creates a universe. So we've granted that, that an attribute of a creator is to create. So we've given them that, but everything else that he said after that, to me, hasn't he hasn't given an argument and doesn't necessarily follow. It could follow, but he'd have to present an argument for why that's the case. I'm restricting it to the human being, yeah? There has to be. And if there is, where is it? And if it did come, not only do I need to find it, I need to then assess what it has, which other writings or other sayings of sages will not have. Just notice the language there is right. Very vague language. If it's come, I'll have to assess the writings. Is he now talking about some sort of being? Is he talking about the message from the being? This is the sort of language that this guy uses on purpose, right? This vague and ambiguous language. So the interlocutor uh, doesn't follow along clearly. There's this ambiguity that he could then, if, if it, because if the interlocutor then says, ah, oh, you were talking about that, he says, no, 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 but I was saying this, if there was something like this, right? So he leaves it ambiguous. So if you challenge him on one point, he could say, oh, well, I actually meant that. So somebody like this, you immediately, I would be stopping and say, what do you mean by that? Get very clear on what you mean. To use <laughs> our friend Darren Hamza, you've got to stop and underline with this guy in big, bold crayons every step of the way because he uses this intentionally vague language so that he doesn't have to make strong claims or indeed if he's challenged, he can go back and say, well, I didn't say that. I said this, which is ambiguous. 
Okay. Yeah? yeah. So second process came in. You now are looking at the contenders. Yeah. And that is what I did. I mean, there are many minor ones. Okay. There is there is a book that I have, and it's uh, the title is the Anthology of World Religions. Okay. Yeah. So it basically covers every potential claimant. Okay, yeah. but they have got their own books. For sure. yeah? yeah, so you have to go through all those, mm -hmm. one by one, as an elimination process. Yeah, because you have to look at what criteria this superior being has provided, right. which automatically is not one that a human being or a collective group of human beings can actually meet. Yeah, Excuse otherwise there wouldn't be why, any difference. Why? Right? Why? Again, why? 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 He's he's rambling on and on and on, and I'm surprised that the guy is just letting him. Why doesn't he say? Well, why are you saying that? And what's the criteria? He said that there must be this criteria. Well, what is this criteria? And why would we accept the criteria? You can put forward any criteria you want, but I, as an interlocutor, you know, am at liberty to to um, not accept that criteria unless you give me a good reason to accept it. Right. Okay. And then you know for sure that this is a man-made construct. Right. So what, yeah. what convinces you that, uh, let's say, Islam is not a man-made construct? It's a shame that he went to that point about what, what convinces you of Islam, because he said that he looked through all of these books. Um, I want to know from him what's his argument that it's more likely to be, you know, Allah as in like a personal God than a deist God. What is it that, that did that for him? Because what he, he seems to be wanting to say is, hey, before making my decision, I looked at all of these different things. So you can't appeal to the or you, you shouldn't be appealing to the Quran at this stage. Or if you are going to appeal to the Quran, then what's the point of looking at everything else? Because you're going to match it against the Quran and you already have a bias for the Quran. So if the claim is that, hey, I had to look at all of these and I was you know, being objective about it or I was being undecided and I looked through all of these and then I settled on Islam for X, Y and Z reasons. The question I would have asked then is why why not a dear Scott? What that seems to be at least more likely than Allah. And if it isn't, what's the argument that it isn't? Because it's a more general God, it hasn't interacted, there's less things to say about it, there's less errors, there's less problems potentially with it. So why not a dear Scott? So but he's already asked now why Islam. Right. Number one, the, the study of the book itself, okay. When you look at it not on a superficial level, yeah. Look at the books in depth. My view is that the evidence speaks for itself. <laughs> Don't you love that? Right, so you do an in-depth view and the evidence. Right, these you hear the key words here. At no point does he give you evidence, but he uses this these buzz words because to the gullible ears, ah, Shabir said there's evidence. Uh, he didn't tell me what evidence, but I heard the word evidence, and he's done a, a you know not a superficial you know investigation with evidence. The first thing you're going to ask is, okay, what was the most powerful part of the evidence that suggested to you that this was the case? And maybe that'll come up. But these are the buzzwords that are thrown out without actually committing to anything. You see, he's not setting anything up substantial here at all. It's still this sort of vague notion that he presents. Okay. In, contained within the Quran. Yeah. Right. Now, I have done that with other books because they, what I necessarily did if Again, I'm sorry I'm stopping, so, but it's only a 13-minute video. So he says he's done it with other books. So the, the question immediately jumps to my mind, what was your criteria that you established that one book was better than the other? Can you share with me that criteria? Because then I can go away. If I agree with it, you'd have to make an argument why that criteria is something I should accept. But if indeed you have had this criteria that you've, quote, looked at other books, but you've established the Quran is the superior book, what was that criteria and why should I accept it as well? Those are key questions at this stage because he's let on, at least, that he's supposedly looked at other books. This message from on high has come. Then the creator will have established a criteria wherewith to establish that this is not man-made. Okay. Yeah. You hear it again? Just this vague language. This, this, cri this creator would have established a criteria. The question here is, what is that criteria? Why should we accept it? And unfortunately, this guy at this moment in time isn't, but but he's on a bit of a ramble now. So he's on a monologue with this vague, ambiguous language, and it's very easy to get hypnotized. So I'm not blaming him per se. That language is hypnotic, and it stops you, actually. Um, and how I know this is a separate point, but it stops you thinking critically. It's actually designed not to let you think critically. It, it dissolves the critical thinking, in a sense, when you use this vague, ambiguous language regularly and, and continually. Yeah. So I looked at the biblical one. I looked at the other ones also. They also contain criteria. Yeah. But using the criteria and assessing the evidence, they fail. Okay. What is the criteria and what is the evidence? 
can we just hear this is all vague, ambiguous stuff, right? How anybody can take it that this guy's saying anything substantial? Yeah, uh, just, well, it's not beyond me. I, I think I've explained why Muslims think this, right? To this, this is music to the to the hypnotic ear, right? It's like singing a song or you you chanting or something like that. You, you just go along with it. And you go, that's amazing. And somebody would ask you, well, what was it that was amazing about? It? But I don't know. It just it just was amazing, right? It's not explicable to people because they're in a hypnotic state, and that's what he's he's doing here. The one that didn't was the Quran. Okay. Now there is a standard here. However, I took it a bit further than that. If, for example, the, uh, the Quran talks about, do you not consider the heavens? Do you not consider many things? The natural world. Do you not consider the birds? How do they fly? Yeah? No. Uh, yes, we consider that. We understand how those things operate. We've got a reasonably good understanding of that. So the fact that the Quran has asked us to consider that, we've got answers and they don't come from the Quran and the Quran in some circumstances contradicts those. So is that not evidence against the Quran? Again, you see, it doesn't make any specific claims, just these sort of general claims. Ask us to investigate this or to consider this. We have done so. What is it the Quran says that we should take seriously, especially today or even back and, then probably? Well, what now, you need to do is ask, how, do, how do the birds fly? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't ask <laughs> my question, right? Is it established in, in the Quran how that happens? Because you're yeah. saying the Quran tells us that we should, you know, ponder on these or, or look at them. So we've done that, right? Thanks to the so Quran if you for say, saying well, something okay, that's trivially true. If we should go and look, um, think about how the birds fly, well, the Quran says they don't. It's Allah that holds them up. So yeah, as soon as you start going into specifics, it fails. This. I'm also looking at what evidence is available through all the research that we human beings have done. Yeah. yeah? So if you look at physicists, you look at ornithologists, you look at experts in uh, bird migration, right. yeah? you start looking at that evidence and it tells you, so for example, the European robin, yeah? it migrates. Yeah. But what does it use to be able to go to where it needs to go? Yeah. One, just as an example, you have got uh, the shearwater bird. Which traverses eight thousand miles. So he's talking what about the doing? migration methodologies of birds, or whatever the case is. How yeah, is that the establishing Quran. the Quran is true? There is nothing in the Quran. There is nothing in Islam about any of that. He's just saying, you see, it's a miracle how the birds do this. Look how God is great. How the Creator managed to do all that. That's all he's doing. And it, but that's a terrible that's a terrible argument for Allah, right? Because in, in, in centuries gone past, Muslims would have said, look how wonderful Allah's creation is. And now we know how that works. We have an, a good naturalistic explanation for many, many of those things. And in fact, with migration, I'm sure people who, who are in the chat, they would look it up and, and we'll have good hypothesis in, or probably even good evidence for how birds do that. But again, that's got nothing to do with the Quran. So he's just making, as you say, stops generalistic statements. That that is leave would leave people to infer that the Quran is suggesting this or alluding to this in some way, and again the, the question the, the other guy should be asking is okay. So you told me about these migrations of certain animals, how does that relate to the Quran? And then he might just say, oh, well, it gets us to ponder. Well, thank you for saying something trivial. Any book I could open, any book, and it'll say, and I might get an idea. Oh, yeah, I, I read this book by you know Sean Carroll or this um, anthropologist. I'm, I'm now starting to investigate. So was it that book that actually got me to ponder? What's the difference between that and the Quran? At the moment, you've said nothing that would establish the Quran is in any way, uh, you know, a useful book to use in any way. Miles, but these are fledglings. They've just been born. As soon as they learn how to fly, off they go. 8,000 miles in a sort of eight. Right. Okay. Now, the question is, how is this happening? A natural explanation is provided. Yeah. That look, this, they, for example, the European robin, okay, uh, a professor uh, slipped my uh, mind. Uh, the professor has written a book in which he looks at how potentially these birds must be using the magnetic. Yeah, I've heard the feeling. Yeah. Heard, yeah. You know, you know, sense of magnetic field of exactly. Yeah. But the, the magnetic field is. Not something that can be physically used by what we would consider to be natural selection. Yeah. That's a big claim. How did you establish what? that? I mean, if you just said the professor has studied this and suggests that that's what birds are using, and then you say, no, natural selection can't do that. Well, you just crit you're just contradicting the, the exact expert that you brought up. Why would you do that? I mean, did, did you are you listening to yourself here? You are now contradicting the person who said this. And what's the argument that 
that somebody or that that natural selection or indeed animals can't use the magnetic effects of the earth no argument given right just the case that it can't be the case so where do we think he's going with this he's saying there's naturalistic explanations he's saying that there are exp there are that this professor has explained this but he's then saying that this can't come about through natural selection yeah it's um yeah. You know. go on no, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Play the video. It cannot be utilized. It might be able to. Okay, tell me how. Well, I'm You just told us how. What do you mean, tell me how? You just appeal to a professor that has studied these, and that's what his hypothesis is, and he may well have good evidence for it. We haven't established that yet. But but now you're saying it can't be the case, and you're saying to him, how's that the case? Like, what's going on here? Well, I'm not an expert no, no, of course, we are just having a conversation. But, I mean, yeah. but look what's happened now, right? He's now gone from the mi migration of birds, which is totally unrelated to the veracity of the Quran being the case. And now he's asking the other guy to provide evidence for how this is the case. Can you see how quickly it turns? Because the other guy wasn't asking questions and pinning him down, he just nodded along. And then now Shabir is in charge of asking questions. He's no longer providing evidence. He's asking the other guy to establish the claim that you know natural selection could do this. He was the one who brought up that natural selection couldn't and hasn't got an argument for it, and now asking the other guy to, to give the opposite view with some evidence or an argument. The Shabir Shuffle. Correct. Complete Shib Shabir Shuffle, shifting of the goalposts, as we call it. The premise, as I understand it, yeah. is that mutations cause random change, and if the random change gives a slight benefit, then it will be passed on, and that's the propagation of evolution. Absolutely. And, I mean, I'm not yeah. sure whether you use evolution no, no, no. or not, but... I, 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 I can see, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you see... When you are talking about mutations. Okay, there's another phrase, right? If you ever hear this guy, there's nothing wrong with that but. That, that's, just a, that's just a filler phrase that is like, I agree with you but, or I'm with you and but, right? If you watch other videos, he'll use the same sort of technique and, and the but negates everything you've said before it. But it, it, again, it gets, it lures the interlocutor into thinking that there's some agreement when in fact there isn't any agreement. It's just a statement there to lure the interlocutor into, you know, not you know, lowering their defenses. But mutations themselves, yes? You are talking an internal change. But in order for that change to take place, the first thing that would have to be within that, the body of that particular bird is this connection with the magnetic field. Yeah, I think he's making the claim that the bird would need to have this ability to detect or or um, somehow interact with this magnetic field. And, and he seems to be claiming that natural selection and or the bird can't do that, but appeal to a professor who suggested or whose hypothesis is exactly that. What's the evidence that this can't be the case? Right. That's the, just, that's the only thing here with somebody like this who doesn't actually make any substantial claims and then shifts the goalpost. Uh, or shifts the burden and the goalposts, but um, we need to ask what's the evidence. You just said that a bird can't do that, that a bird must have this, and what are you saying the bird can't? Where's your evidence the bird can't? You appeal to that professor. Are you now saying that you disagree with that professor? What's your evidence for that? But again, remember all of this. We're going off a complete tangent here. We're now no longer talking about is there a creator or certainly is why is Islam true? Because that was this gentleman's original question, right? Well, how did Shabir select Islam? And now we're off on a complete tangent here. Very easy if you're not an experienced interlocutor and we don't slow this down to notice this happening. It's easy again, you know, being in the armchair afterwards where we can slow it down. Uh, but it's a, it's a good learning for all of us, I hope. How? Because you must remember that the magnetic field is so weak, yeah, that it has to be below what we would call the normal atomic level. Okay. So how what is he talking about? What is the normal atomic level? If you look at the magnetic field, it, it, um, you know, if you, especially if you go to the poles, you, you'll see, you know, the, uh, the, the um, what do you call them? The suns, the particles from the sun interacting at the poles, right? And um, there is an effect. And, of course, when the astronauts flew to the moon, they had to go through, um, what was the, the, the belt? Um, Van Allen. Mind, the Van, Van Allen. Allen belt. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and that's just outside or again, I, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it's just outside or inside of the magnetic field of the earth. So it is fairly powerful. The fact that we don't perceive it here on earth doesn't mean that other animals can't perceive it. So, I mean, where is he coming with this? And I don't know what the normal uh, uh, atomic uh, number or the normal atomic idea is here. He's just making up level. stuff. 
Yeah. What is What's the normal, normal atomic, atomic level? level? I mean, this is just when you get into gibberish, right? You throw a few scientific words into your gibberish statement, and then it sounds like it's something stupendous when, in fact, it's basically gibberish and just some sort of unintelligible assertion. So how? Well, I would like to go this way. Yeah, yeah sure, so sure. It's, it's like this. I mean, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, no but problem. If, are you saying that if we can't prove this to be a part of nature, then it must have been from God? Ah, good. Exactly. Right. Now he's... He's kind of getting back there, right? He, he could see that this was Waffle and was going off in the long grass. And that's kind of where he's wanting to go. Hey, this is, a, is miraculous. If these birds do do this, either we don't know how and it must be miraculous or um, we do know how and that's miraculous, which, you know, but then you, again, you need an argument. Are you saying it is, we do know how and it's miraculous or we don't know how and it's miraculous. And if it is miraculous or it is something, how did you establish that? Especially if this professor has said that he has a hypothesis and presumably has some reasons for that. No, no, I'm not oh. God of the gaps. No, right, okay. No, well, that's, good. We'll get that out of the way. <laughs> that's out of the way. Okay, so what what I'm, like I said, once I have established the message itself, I am also looking at the evidence it is saying to consider. Yeah, so when it is talking about, look at how the birds fly. Yeah, yeah? well, how do they fly? The creator is holding them up. Well, he's not literally holding them up, is he? What, is the, what are the mechanics? There they go, those birds. There we go, right? Yeah. So he is a believer the creator is holding them up. How do we establish, how could that claim be falsified? Uh, to me, that's just immediately an unfalsifiable claim. I want to know how that could could it be the case that the creator is not holding them up? Because presumably, maybe in the past, they thought that the creator was sending down lightning bolts. Now we have a good understanding of how that happens. How does he establish it's, the creator? It's amazing them up? how suddenly he comes up with all these things, so he knows exactly what it says. So he has been told that there is a mistake in the Quran which is about the birds, that the creator is holding them up, that they don't really fly. They don't follow Bernoulli or anybody else. They just follow God. So this is how aeroplanes and everything flies. It's just through the grace of God. That's what it says in the Quran. And this is what he's saying. And he's saying, well, but it's not really that. It says, yes, God is holding them up, but it's not really holding them up. So then why would the Quran say God is holding them up when it's not God holding them up? I don't know how he argues this. Presumably, some scholar will say that's metaphorical. And what it really means is that God is sort of, um, I mean, there's a couple of views. I can't remember that there's a specific name for it. I think there's a philosophical name where, you know, God is is in charge and is, is actively um, controlling every particle in the entire universe. Uh, I don't know how that would work with you know some version of free will. And I don't know that there's many theists who take that. I don't know, if, know how many Muslims accept this sort of view. Um, but if it's not that, then as you point out, stops. What exactly does this mean? And, and can this could this have been much betterly, fra much better, much better phrase than than this is? But you also see there he's, po he's pointing his hand right. So that's now another distract distraction technique. Why would you get somebody to look over there? We know what birds are. So why would you point to birds as if this is all designed to keep the the interlocutor, you know, not focused in on on the position? That's what he goes to do there. Occasionalism, maybe that's it, Dave. I'm not sure. We'd have to look it up. But these are all distracting techniques. Remember when we did the other one with stops, Adnan was waving his hand. Anything where there's bodily movements that's going on in front of your interlocutor in some sort of exaggerated way, uh, I, I take it to be that that's a distraction technique because you won't normally do that. If the two of you are talking and you really want to understand what the other person is saying and have an intellectually honest discussion, you will be focused in on that person, listening carefully and trying to you know, be as charitable as you can. And you wouldn't want to put him off or throw them off or use any techniques that, that he's using here. Uh, otherwise, the person could be distracted. And that's the last thing you want if you want to have an intellectually honest conversation. Those birds, they're, they're flying. What are the mechanics behind that? Now, it is plain obvious that the creator in the Quran is encouraging humanity to go and discover the natural world. There's an actual reason for this. This is a common it? claim that they make, that um, the Quran is telling you to go and ponder, reflect and investigate in the natural world when it doesn't. And, and it's, I don't know why they always do that. I don't know why they say go, it, it tells you to go and experiment and, and to understand everything. I, I don't know why they say that, because it doesn't, because as soon as you would do that, you would find that the Quran is wrong. The Quran then actually establishes for humanity, it says, it says, we will show you on the horizons and within yourselves until it is manifest to you, this is the truth. Now, what is it? What a vague and trivial statement that is. How do we establish that? What's the methodology? How do we establish that, that, that's, that it's from this God? 
because there's some, there's competing gods there, or in fact that it's not God and it's just a process that has happened over billions of years. How do we establish that? The Quran hasn't given us any criteria that is you know clear and methodical and logical and that we could all agree to and follow. What does it actually say? Are we as human beings going to get to a stage, bearing in mind that this is supposed to have been brought down a thousand and four hundred odd years ago, yeah. when it said, we will show you on the horizons and within yourselves that this is the truth. Now, what is it that we in the past 14 or 100 years have discovered about our internal workings? But it Whatever we've discovered, we've discovered ourselves. There's nothing in there that the Quran has given us. And if you're just saying the Quran inspired us, but other books can do that. So that doesn't point to the Quran being special. Somebody else could have read another book, indeed the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita or, you know, the Buddhist writings and, and decided to do some, you know, self-investigation, contemplation. They could have become some kind of medical doctor or a scientist or whatever. So many other, other books have inspired people to do all kinds of amazing things. So there's nothing special about this claim whatsoever. If all you're saying is that the Quran inspired people to go look about things, but it hasn't given us any criteria. If the Quran said, hey, go out and discover and you will find, you know, the um, string theory, for example, or whatever, something really unique and special that no other book had ever said and no human could possibly have known in some incredible detail, that would be quite impressive. But of course, it does none of that. It gives these vague, ambiguous statements that other books could have done as well. And in fact, other books probably have done a lot better. But it, it mentioned it. It says we, we human beings are going to do that. Okay. Why? Because this is what the creator is intending for us. But having said that, it also says on the horizon. Now, the choice of word is odd. Yeah. If, if, if me and you are looking here, what would be the horizon? It is the furthest point that we can see. Yeah. But if we travel today, what happens to the horizon? Yeah, that's a sphere. It moves away. So basically, a, a process of search and find, okay. search and find, we are going to undertake as human beings, which is what we have done. Yes, but that's something that we're naturally inclined to do. So there's nothing in the Quran that's special about that. And the Quran kind but of... Further that, like I said... Sorry, say again? Yeah, the Quran, like he mentions the horizon and then he sort of draws a circle, but the Quran actually has more evidence that it's a flat earth. So... Like, yeah, well, that's true as well. Yeah. He's, he's trying to make the analogy that, hey, if you get there, you know, the horizon keeps moving and that's like searching, right? So he's trying to draw an analogy with searching and then he wants to link it to the Quran. But this is like mundane. This is mundane, if not trivial at best. There's nothing in here that's substantive at all. Right? But again, to the music, to the ears, to the people who are listening and already believe the Quran is true, this just confirms their beliefs. But he's not saying anything substantial, which is what I'm saying. He's a master of not saying anything substantial. And to the well, gullible ear, it sounds in, like it's something. Yep. He's sliding in the idea that it's uh, spherical. Yeah. Like I said, if the Quran says, as an example, humanity, okay, is the best that has been created. Amongst them, they are a group who are the best because they are attending to a particular system which is totally fair and totally just. Okay. okay. How does how do what how do you establish that that we are the best. By what criteria are we the best? We don't run the fastest. We don't live the longest. We don't see the furthest. We don't dive the deepest. What is it that's best? And if you're just going to point to our advanced consciousness, then presumably the Quran could have made, made that explicitly clear in such exquisite detail that would mesmerize all of us. And we couldn't help but accept that it's from God. Instead, what does it give us? A vague, ambiguous statement that anybody could have made from the beginning of time. But the question is this. If, as human beings, I, I was traversing the earth and I came across somebody who is not of my color, should I be aggressive with them? Now, there are instances in the Quran which I would consider to be far, far ahead of what we would call the time that it was revealed. So, as an example, it says, the Creator is the one who gave us our colors and our languages. Okay. What has that got to do with the price of fish? Why put a statement about colors and races and languages. Well, today in the United Kingdom, we have the Race Relations Act. What? <laughs> what the hell? The Quran talked about there'll be different races. Well, we've established that way before the Quran. There were different races out there. People were discovering each other. So it's, this is nothing fancy. And now we have a Race Relations Act. Is this somehow because of the Quran? Why was that brought into law? Because human beings, or based on color, were hating each other. Okay. Now, the Quran goes a bit further and it says, Oh, mankind, addressing the whole of humanity, we have created you into nations and tribes. 
which there's your explanation for why people of different colors and different tribes would be very cautious of each other in the past naturally they you'd see the art group as potentially hostile and and that has been historically the case you know when we were still developing as humans and even today we still see that right nothing nothing unusual about that that could have been predicted and probably was many years ago so there's nothing special about that we are yeah we don't want to but we are we automatically seem to Allay ourselves with the ones we are comfortable with for some odd reason. But these are why. It says, oh man. Okay, but if it's some odd reason, either it's a natural reason or it's, it's a God reason, it wouldn't be odd and would be explained in the Quran. So that's not a particularly useful statement. That seems to be going against your point. If there's an odd reason that we are like this, either it's explained in the Quran or it isn't. And if it isn't, do we have a naturalistic explanation? I think it's clear that we do. So that wasn't a particularly helpful statement in favor of your argument, seemed to be against your argument. Mankind, we have created you into nations of tribes so that you may respect each other and not despise each other. Now, I am I am looking at this. I'm looking at the evidence, yeah, and it is all fitting. But there's a further. What is, what evidence is actually fitting here that we are different tribes and that we are naturally suspicious of each other, and that according to the Quran, we that's the the reason we've been created like this is to what respect each other. Well, you did a piss poor job of doing that. Our natural instinct is to be cautious of of you know an out group. So if if he created us to do that, how are we supposed to do that if the inclination is to be cautious of an out group? What is this just a test against? So I'll create you in the opposite way of what I want you to be, so that you have to struggle to work this out because the Quran doesn't make this clear, and then eventually come to it. And then we what he can pat himself on the back because the Quran made some vague statement about doing this. Further step. You see, what I would call, for me, the clincher. My ability to reason has brought me to that stage. Even if I say, for example, the theory of evolution, okay, in its physical form, yeah. has brought me to where I am today. Whether it be natural selection or any other method that has allowed me to come here today, as I was discussing with the lady earlier on, my ability, which we call the subconscious, okay, allows us very clearly to extend beyond what we would call the natural world. Okay. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, I know that I can use the word, my essence tells me it is wrong. Oh, wow. So this is the clincher that his essence tells him that something's wrong. And what about somebody else's essence who tells them that something's wrong or right and it conflicts with him? What is he going to say then? I mean, these are like trivial statements that any human could make about anything. Somebody could come along and say, well, hey, I they could use the same words. Every single word that Shabir is 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 talked about here, is, and they say, "Do you know what? I got this from the Bhagavad Gita, and nobody would be any the wiser. And at no point would they have said anything, or would he have said anything that makes his view any more likely than say a claim from the Bhagavad Gita or somewhere else. I mean, this is utterly trivial, and he's not saying anything of substance." Yeah, I, I feel like the I'm mechanic. sitting next to an aquarium or something. Like a, there, there is nothing here that that keeps my attention. It, I'm, I'm just drifting off because this is so inane. There's nothing there. Mechanics of the body are not telling me it is wrong. What, what is the essence that I have? What is that level element of consciousness that I can't touch, I can't feel, but I know it is there. Okay. It has taken me one step further. And that step is the fact that I am going to die. Now, I am <laughs> certain, looking at the evidence. Okay, so we've got to consciousness. And I suppose the best you could say is that we, we as far as we know, we are the one organism that recognizes we're going to die. We don't know if other organisms, you know, other animals do, or whether they just live in the moment. Um, again, I, I'm not sure on the, on the studies on this. I've heard other people talk about it, that other animals are not aware that they're going to die. Um, and maybe that we are the only animals that are aware that we have a limited lifespan and we are going to die, and that's due to our consciousness, larger brains, etc. There's, the, you know, there's naturalistic answers for this. So he's got to the view of consciousness that we're going to die. Okay, so what? That yes, in that sense, that's something different maybe to other animals. But again, that's just this is known. This is quite well known these days. So what is it that he's trying to say that is in some way substantive here? You know, experts in human psychology and you know uh, the the related fields don't know, and they didn't get it from the Quran. Let's let's be clear about that. And they weren't inspired by the Quran either. So at this moment in time, 
I'm not hearing anything, of course. The evidence that if I go through life, I get old, decrepit, can't move a muscle, can't yeah. move anything. Yeah. All I will have is the memory if it is still there. Yeah. Otherwise, even that is going to disappear. Okay. The Quran interestingly states that, you know, we will grow you into a strong being and then we will take you back as though you are going back to childhood. And this is what old age is doing to us. Yeah. Well, Hang wait a minute. There's an extension to this. Hang on. Hang on. This Go is on. actually stated in the Hindu text as well. So what's so special about the Quran? Like, you, you, I found the same thing, the exact same thing of the soul remaining the same, but the body changing. But that's also stated in the Hindu text as well. So clearly, like, you know, he hasn't read, he's basically making that claim. And what specific chapter? He hasn't even specified what chapter does it state it. No. But to me, that's that's a that's not a good thing. The fact that you were a child, right? We understand that it, uh, you know, in you know, as, as developmental stages go on, and when you're early, you know, your brain is growing, etc., till you get you know early twenties or whatever the case is. Um, what I would like to see, or what I would expect, is that you hold on to that until the point of death, not that you get to the you know near death and then you start going back to being a child that can't understand what's going around. You become decrepit and all the rest of it. Um, okay. Certainly, from the Islamic point of view. And the natural extension is that once I die, is that the end of me? My contention would be guaranteed no. Based on the current evidence that we possess, it is very clear that we do have something within us which potentially is neither here nor there, potentially is extending our life beyond what we would call the normal life. Okay, what's the evidence for that, right? Um, he hasn't provided any. Here's the thing, right? These are just claims. Um, and he's claiming that there's something that goes beyond our, this life. Right? Clearly, he's biased in that view, but what's the argument that that happens, right? And unfortunately, our friend here is just sort of nodding along. I'd be, okay, so you've made a claim that something goes beyond. What's your evidence that there is something that goes beyond, and what is this something? Tell me about this, right? What, is, what does Islam say? What does the Quran say? How did you establish this? Because you're presumably providing all this information because somehow it leads back to Islam being true. Remember, that's the claim that it's supposed to be making here. But we're special. We've got this consciousness, etc., and it goes on. Well, again, the, the Christians make that claim. Other religions make that claim. So in terms of it being, other than it being kind of an extraordinary or supernatural claim, other people do it well. So this doesn't, again, suggest that the Quran is true. This just suggests that other people have, and most likely, you know, or at least one likelihood is that Muhammad got this idea from other people and incorporated it into the Quran. We've read many verses where that's the case. So you haven't established in any way at this stage that this appeals to Islam or the Quran in particular. But you see, the issue then I face, I'll finish, and I know you want to come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. The issue I face is a simple one. All this has already been confirmed in the Quran, and some of it, I looked at the evidence and the Quran confirmed it. So Okay, so there are those vague statements again, right? Um, I looked at the Quran and the evidence. What evidence? You've made vague statements here that could, could, could very well have been said about other books and you haven't provided any evidence. You've used your catchphrase, your buzzword, but you've in fact given none. You've given some speculations that could appeal to anything. Nothing at the moment is in remotely. There's not even an argument that's been made. There's been some assertions here and nothing else. And unfortunately, it hasn't been challenged on them. So both ways, it clearly establishes that there is an intelligence behind everything that I can perceive, not only within my locality, but for as far as I can understand or we collectively as human beings can discover. Okay. At no point did he make an argument for this. This is a bare assertion, as you call it. And what can be asserted without ev evidence can be dismissed without evidence. He's, what would provide evidence is if there was something that was somehow supernatural after you died and he could establish it. And not only could he establish it, but he could establish that it was it was from the Quran and not the Bible or some other books. Then he would have something. He hasn't. He, and of course, he likely can't do that, which is why he hasn't even broached the subject. But at this moment, he's now got to this some greater intelligence. Sure, you can make one assertion after the other, and then pat yourself on the back. And you want to, and at no point, like I say, is this appeal to the to to Islam. So this guy could say, "Well, hey, other people say the same thing. What makes you? What makes it special?" And he said, "But he just said, right? The Quran's the Quran has confirmed this. Where? Where have you done this? 
that you that again that's just a, a blank assertion if we had to go back and see how many assertions that have been made here and not one argument has been given in 13 minutes here i would imagine it's at least 20 i would imagine just round figure right well so you said that you have you have Sorry. evidence somebody want to say something or was it maybe in the video i don't know for uh, life extending after death no, no, I said it's either here or there. I said, look, I'm looking at my essence. Now, I just... Okay. Unfortunately, that's where it sort of stops halfway. I don't know if there was a second part there. Uh, but um, there we go. Let's leave it at that.